Alternative Dig Talk. Real Issues. Real Talk. What did the church do? Tell him, man, what's up? Man, can you imagine people just dump everywhere? Someone drinks water and throws the bottle wherever. Come on, Rogers. What else do you expect people to do with an empty bottle? Simanya now, Rukoda. Do you know that plastics take at least 450 years to decompose? What? That's a long time. Exactly. Because plastics are made out of a lightweight and flexible material that doesn't decompose easily. And plastics everywhere in the environment cause plastic pollution. What is plastic pollution now? It is the accumulation of plastic waste in the environment, like bottles, polythene bags, straws, all of these contribute to plastic pollution. I have been using them without knowing their effect. Yeah, a lot of people have. Plastics are a danger to the ecosystem, both on land and in water. So how can we overcome this problem? Is there something we can do? Oh yes, we can reduce by minimizing the use of plastics, reuse by repurposing them, or recycle by collecting and processing them into new products. Everyone wants to change the world, but no one wants to change themselves for the world. How about we change our habits for the world? And, and it, it starts, starts with, with me and, and you. you. This message is brought to you by Alternative Digitalk. The Alternative Digitalk. Real issues. Real talk. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to today's edition of the Hotline Show. But first of all, I wish you a very... I welcome you to 2024 officially because this is our first show for the year 2024. So I welcome you. And I, uh, I don't know what, how they say in English. Okuba, this is 2023. But yeah, happy 2024. I hope that uh, you have good resolutions and that they do come about and that you get that which you're deserving, but also that you set resolutions that you can work hard towards and, and make sure that you achieve. My name is Roger Stoyawe, and today, as always, we come here every Monday evening, uh, 7 to 9 p.m., to be able to talk about a number of issues that are happening in our communities at the national level, at the very local level, a lot of those issues that affect us as Ugandans, and try to find some of the solutions. And most of the times, I'm joined by two gentlemen, a one from the leading party NRM, who is a director for the external affairs of the uh, NRM party. His name is uh, Major Retard Awich Pola, and he is with me in the studio today. Unfortunately, we're not able to be joined by uh, Mr. Joseph Wachieno, uh, the, uh, one of the leaders of the UPC party, for one or two reasons. But we will still carry on anyway. So uh, uh, buckle up, join the discussion. Join. You can find us on our uh, social media handles. Uh, the first Facebook is the Alternative Uganda and Digital TV, so you'll be able to join the discussion, put their comment, put their question, we'll be able to address. We have a number of issues, but largely we are looking at 2024 as we are unpacking what is it that we need to look at, what is it that we need to focus on. A lot of issues that happened last year, how better do we streamline some of those to make sure that uh, the year does happen and we get a thing or two out of it. So I'm going to welcome uh, Major. Uh, you're welcome to the show. Happy 2024, of course, first of all. Um, to begin with, how are the festivities? Uh, <clears throat> thank you so much. I have a poor voice though today, mm. but I hope I'm audible enough. You are. Uh, 2023 was good with its task and challenges that we went through, but it was over and above we are alive and we continued a new task. Mm. So the festivities was good. I Christmas itself I left this place I left Kampala very late because we had a meeting with the president mm. in Nakasero till three o'clock that Sunday. So as it took off to go to Rachitura, I also took off to go to to northern Uganda. Mm. So it was a very tight schedule, but all the same I managed to reach home and uh, we had a good function. Then I came back to Kampala. Um I stop there. I could no, 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 it's okay. Uh, How, uh, uh, I just want to say that uh, I joined this talk show towards the end of last year, yes. and it was good to me because it, uh, I find it one of the very disciplined uh, TV stations that I, I always meet. Uh, you are courteous, the staffs are courteous. Thank you. The questions we ask are intelligent and disciplined, so we are happy about it. But also to show that uh, since it is an online 
discussion to show the world out there that the freedom in Uganda is there, mm -hmm. especially of freedom of speech. And as you know, I always appear with a comrade of Sieno from UPC who can make all the most critical comments you can make about NRM or even the person <laughs> of Museveni. But he works on himself and everything is fine. That is his view. And <laughs> so those are the, the situation in Uganda as opposed to what other people depict. Otherwise, if it is what you, it is depicted and somebody from some part of Canada or New, UK is watching, would think that maybe Usieno will not go back home safe. But so that is it, and we, ex we promise that more, more freedoms will be protected and enforced mm -hmm. as we continue. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the topic today is bright, uh, broad, that is an outlook on Uganda's 2024 political processes. Uh, I just want to make a slight comment. Some things, sometimes we take things for granted. Uganda, somebody may think Uganda has been there before. Uh, or it will be there forever. Yes, it may be there forever, but there's nothing which is permanent in the world. We only live in a world of constant change and processes. Yes. The world is made of interconnections, processes and <coughs> change. Now, just to share um, this knowledge with the viewers in that, uh, if you look at the Constitution, uh, is it third schedule? It talks about indigenous communities. Yes. As on... 1926, 19, no, 28th February 1926. Now, that marks the solid Ugandan as it is. Mm. Be because they, they use that because they define who is a Ugandan. A Ugandan is anybody who belongs or the grandparents belongs to one of those indigenous communities mm -hmm. in the shadow as by that date, meaning the minimum cutoff of Uganda is that date. And it is important to know this because uh, Kisoro, for example, was brought later. Mm. West Nile, for example, was brought later. And a bit of uh, Kenya, Eastern Uganda was lost to Kenya. So the current geographical Uganda that it is, is that date. And it is how a person acquires a citizenship by birth through that. Maybe also worth noting is that uh, the, those indigenous communities are arranged alphabetically. Uh, a, like a choli, what, you know, A, B, C, up to Z. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I think number 17, interestingly, as Banyarwanda, as an indigenous community, and rightly so, why? Because during the constituency assembly discussion, debate on indigenous communities, the people around Kisoro adopted Bafumbira because of the mountain. Mm. Now, then Tungamu lot, who are divided by colonial borders, because the colonialists just came and said, here is the boundary. Yes. So if your cousin was in Rwanda, he said, well, this. Rwanda. if you're yeah. in Uganda, and those are the group of the Ruzindana, the Captain God Gasatora. Mm. They're in this side. So, this one this said, we don't have a river here. We don't have a mountain here. We are not Banyankole. So what do we call ourselves? So they, they maintain that for us, we shall call ourselves Banyarwanda. Mm -hmm. And those are the Banyarwanda envisaging the constitution. They are not the refugees. Those are not the Banyarwanda refugees. These are Banyarwanda cut by geographical border, by the, by the colonial boundaries and they found themselves. Remember that all the communities in Uganda are divided by boundaries, except one, mine, the Langis. Langis are the only tribe which does not touch anybody of Uganda. From the north is bordered by Acholi, from the east is bordered by Karamojong and Taiso, from the south by Bunyoro, it is in the middle. But the Acholis, the Acholis community in Sudan is bigger than the one in Uganda. Yeah, yeah. Lugwara. Lugwara in Congo is bigger than the one in Uganda. Kasese. The Kasese people are bigger than. Even Batora in the, 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 with, in, and, and, with and, Empaco. And these ones of uh, Busia. This, Busia, yes. Busia, the vice president, Muda Wari was vice president in Kenya. Agura Wari was a minister in Uganda. And there was yes. <laughs> siblings. So, uh, I just like to say, when we are talking of uh, uh, outlook on Uganda's 2024. I just want us to click 
and find out that the definition of Uganda, as we know, we are taking of the minimum cutoff of 28th February 1926. That is now the I, current geography that took place. Just to, to take a bit, a little bit, a little bit. Um, the thing about Rwanda, excuse me, and Rwandans, how do we now draw a line between those who actually therefore became Baganda mm. and those who then come from Rwanda and become, because it's an indigenous uh, 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 tribe here, anyone can decide, you know what, I am in Rwanda and there is a tribe here, I can live here. Right? Just like the ones bordering South Sudan can one day go and, go and, and live in Sudan, another day they will come to Uganda. How do we draw a line between those? The line is simple. The definition is you must have belong, okay? Mm. <clears throat> now, uh, when you, 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 you there are subs, you know, a, 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 a law mm. like a constitution mm. provides a broad framework. Mm -hmm. Then under the constitution, there are subsidiary parliamentary legislation <coughs> that explains the detail. But even then it goes down to regulations. For example, the practical sense mm. in the Ministry of Internal Affairs is that if you apply for ID, for example, you come for passport. Mm. There's a desk officer who is supposed to ask you who is your grandfather and who is your clan. There's simple questions that are designed. I have, I have, I have a lot of friends mm. I even grew up with yes. that have been denied passports because of that, yeah. yet they were born because, here in Uganda. No, no, if it is a question of birth, birth <laughs> is a different thing. And this is the, the, the misconception. Some people misconstrue or construe that if you are born in Uganda, mm. then you are a citizen. No, that is not true. That is not I am a citizen by birth. No, that is not what it means. Mm. Isn't that one of the categories? No, no, that is not what it means. You read the constitution again. Mm. You, it says you are a citizen by birth. If you are, it, it gives conditions mm. that you must have been born from a parents who are Uganda and as defined. Otherwise, you are saying, if a Kenyan, Kenyatta, and uh, some Christian came from Kenya and produced a child here, you are saying they would be Uganda. <laughs> no, that no. is not the case. I, I, I thought the condition was that at the time of your birth, uh. your parents were living no, 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 in no. that country. No, at the time of your birth, your parents were Ugandans. At the time of your birth, your parents were Ugandans. Otherwise, if that was the case, it would mean any Tanzanian uh, Nyerere, who comes with a Christian from Nyerere, comes and lives in Uganda for two years, produce children and they become Ugandans. No, that's not the case. That is applicable in America. In America, it is possible. In lots yeah. of countries. Yeah, in America, that, you know the history of America is that uh, America is have indigenous. America is a no man's land. Yeah. Everybody in America is Bafurich. Mm -hmm. They are migrants. Yeah, yes. The American Europeans went and annihilated <coughs> the Red Indians. So everybody in America is a, 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 a Mufurichi. Mm. If you see an American white, can be American German, American French, uh, American Italian, yeah, American true. Greek, lineage, American uh, white, somewhere so whatever it is. The so they adopted that principles. And that's why they keep saying it's a land of opportunity. Because the original Europeans who would go there would go for opportunities. Okay? Uh, and uh, of course, uh, Owen went there and... Uh, a lost opportunity. <laughs> do we have enough time? Today we, we have do. enough time. We, we do have time. <laughs> Owen. Now, Owen that I'm talking about who went to America and lost opportunity is that, you see, when you talk of utopian, mm. when somebody says something good, you say, ah, What's that one is being utopian. Yes. This will be, being utopian in this sense means is talking of a dream thing that cannot be in Fant reality. Fantasy. No. Fantasy that cannot be achieved. Mm. Now, this utopian concept came up during industrial revolution in, U in Europe, especially mm. in UK, in Manchester in particular. Mm. Because during industrial revolution, they exploited people a lot. Children, mothers and whatever, to the extent that the industrial owners who were the rulers, forced people to labor. Now, if you did want to work, they passed a law called the vagabond law. The vagabond law was to force you to go and work. Yes. 
So the situation was a lot of suffering. So somebody wrote a novel, a novel saying there was an island where there was peace, people were living in harmony, they were happy. Now, meaning that it was just a fiction. Yes. Now, that's why when you said, you said you are being utopian. However, a man called Owen attempted to implement, that was the first stage of socialism. Owen attempted to establish this utopian kind of life. He was the first ever to establish a nursery school. This kindergarten was established by somebody called Owen. And it worked. The workers were organized in the dormitories. The children were put in nurseries. The mothers would go to work. And then you'd find children looked after, mm. you know, the first nursery. Mm. So when he said this thing can work, it is not utopian. We can organize a good society along this line. So he asked for money from the king of England to go to America, the land of opportunity. Mm. He went to New Jersey. New Jersey is a, a state bordering New York. Mm. New Jersey is like Wakiso and Kampala. You have New York surrounded by New Wakiso. You have Kampala surrounded by Wakiso. So New Jersey is a state around New York like the Wakiso of Kampala. Mm. So this guy went and dumped his money there, tried to organize the utopian there. His money <laughs> it was failed. eaten. It he failed. collapsed and died. <laughs> so America, because it is the, the, the guys went and hunted the Red Indians. You know, hunting and killing for nothing. When we were young, we were cattle keepers like you. Mm. We used to hunt this monitor lizard. But it was a sport or a game would spend like four hours chasing it and killing it for nothing. This is not edible, this is nothing. So this is what used to happen with the Red Indians. Mm. So now the migrants, the Bafurichi, therefore, tied themselves to the philosophy that as long as you are born in America, you are, you American. are an American. Oh, that's so right. people now think that kind of American legal system it's applicable everywhere. It is not in Uganda. It is not true that if you're living in Uganda, you're born in Uganda, you're in Uganda. You must be, your parents must, must be have a Uganda. Lineage. If your parents had got a, a citizenship by registration, then already you'll be a parent, a Ugandan, because your parents were already... By Ugandan, by son, if your mother. parents were citizenship by birth, then you'll be a citizen because of your parents. So the cut off there is that you must be a Ugandan if your parents were Ugandan. Ugandans. So therefore, it is, it, it, the procedure, it is a procedural aspect in the, in the Ministry of Internal Affairs to know who is our Mnyarwanda mm -hmm. as demarcated by colonial borders and who is a refugee or who is a newcomer. Okay? A newcomer is different from those cut by colonial borders. The Ruzindana, the Gadga Satura, you know, Kitwe. You, you know, Kitwe, in a, you know, I'm so lucky I know all, all parts of Uganda. Oh so I know all parts of Uganda, so I, I know it. So if you know, a bigger part of Rohama, Rohama, the constituency yes, which was yes. represented by a first lady, mm. there's a place called Kitwe. All that going to the area of uh, Mugenye, who was the secretary, Bank of Uganda, mm. and the husband of Mary, who was a minister. Mm. The whole of that space is an uh, area of... Uh, but cut by boundaries, mm. and it goes down also to Muntuyera area side there, mm. the other side. So it goes down also, like you go to towards Kabale. But all these are areas cut by geographical boundaries, and they are rightly Ugandans. So I am saying that when we are looking for uh, looking at Uganda's 24 political process, we should also look at try to think about. We don't take things for granted. Figure out. What is this Uganda? When did it really become that Uganda as it is? Mm. And who are the, those? The so so the, 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 Uga the indigenous communities are listed in the schedule of the constitution. Mm. And they are listed alphabetically. The other thing I wanted to comment about is uh, uh, 2024. 2024 is a year like any other year, 365 days. Some institutions like UN, they have a calendar of events. Every day of the year, UN, today there's going to be this, today, there, tomorrow, like that. All the 365 years, I mean days yes. of the year, yes. UN, there's what is called the calendar, the yeah, UN the calendar. calendar. Mm. So I would imagine there could be a framework system, but I've not seen a calendar for Uganda, but there should be a framework system 
where we know how the country is run. But if we don't have it then, then we, we, we always mark our years uh, by milestone events, the events that will occur through that year. And, for, and I yeah. think this is a backward. We should uh, get a, a more better way of doing it because this now returns us back to the past. You remember President Museveni has been quoted several times, and it's on, in all parts of the Ghana. When they ask, when were you born, at some time they would signify your birth with an event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Either Most the of their time names, when yes. there was a flooding, or when there was an epidemic in animal disease, where yeah. cows yeah. died, yeah. cattle died, or something. But I think at this time, there should be a line ministry, especially public service, I think. Public service can come up with a calendar. So that when we talk of Uganda 2024, you can have a rough figure of what will happen what in Uganda. Is, yes. You know all the holidays, you know all the major activities, mm. you know what will happen. You, and you, it's easy to get even from other ministries. Mm. What will the Ministry of Agriculture want done this year? How about the Electoral Commission? What will they have? So that we can have a calendar. So 2024, we shall think, still continue seeing this. Even, I see, feel like it even helps better planning because then you know what to, then you know to what, plan for. Yeah, you're, even you're me like I can doing plan. disaster preparedness by just going along and Yeah, even me out. I can plan my things I'm going to do over the year. Yeah. So, but now here, 2024, the other thing to mention about 2024 is that it's a few years to election. And also for us, is many years inside our manifesto as NRM. So it is also a moment to calculate what is our percentage achievement in terms of implementation mm. and the challenges there too. So it is quite a unique year. Uh, of course, political processes, uh, uh, these events that will unfold, uh, some, most of the events are constitutional, Mm. that the constitution demands that you do this or the law demands that the, the, the laws of parliament demands that by this year should have done this and others are also by will and others uh, you will to do this and those will form the processes but others will are also determined by foreign forces some foreign forces will try to make sure the impact on us over this year mm. so there are going to be so many uh, processes then it brings us to the expectation then there will be many expectations of course as it is so that is just my overarching comment about the about topic. the year 2024. All right, and, and, and now we're going to go. Of course, you've written some issues that I thought we should talk about today, and and one of them I'll just begin with the last one that you 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 hinted on, the idea that even 2024 is going to be in part informed by the external uh, forces, and external uh, uh, impacts that cannot necessarily come from Uganda, and one of them is. We've, I think, recently concluded the Speaker's Conference of the Commonwealth that was hosted here in Uganda, in, in, in Munyonyo here. And, and uh, uh, was, uh, invited, I think they were invited about 43, 43 uh, uh, speakers and uh, presiding officers of parliaments in the Commonwealth countries. And I think 10 of them did not turn up. And one of the issues they gave is our uh, anti-homosexuality act saying, they, they do not apparently agree with the position of Uganda on that particular issue. To that extent, how far do you think as a, a country we are going to have to hold ourselves and say, this is what we can do, this is what we cannot do, and this is how far we engage with you, or that is how much you interfere with our affairs or inform, in that case, our affairs. Are we, do, you, do you feel like this year maybe moving forward it could be a beginning? Because this is a law that many Ugandans have strong feelings about, including the leaders of the country. How, how do you see us maneuvering uh, through that this year? <coughs> I already apologize for my voice. First of all, it is worth, worth noting mm. that this act of parliament was a birth of a private member's bill. Yes. And I'm saying this because when we are closing our end of year press conference at the party secretariat, mm. a journalist asked a question that uh, Mr. Secretary General, the opposition members of parliament, or even opposition at large, mm. have left this thing to NRM to fight it out mm. with the foreigners. My answer to that was that, because I asked to, to supplement on what the Secretary General had said, mm. my answer to that was that, first, uh, this bill was a private member's bill. It wasn't a government bill. But the procedures in parliament is that if somebody initiates a law 
government cannot come and stop it. The only ground government can come in in, <coughs> in what is called a statement of financial implication. If the law is envisaged to be passed by a way that implementing that law would it cost money. For example, if the law required a recruiting workers mm. who will work under that law mm. and the salary of workers will not be there or the transport for the workers or allowances, that is only when the government can deny what is called certificate of financial implication. implication. Yes. But otherwise, the legislation started in parliament. Government cannot stop it. In fact, if government stopped it, government would be blamed for interfering with the legislative process. And yet, a judiciary is supposed to be an independent arm of government. government. Therefore, this bill was initiated by the opposition, particularly Asuman Basari. Basari. Yeah, Basari. Is it Jema? Jema. Mm. Now, again, not only was it initiated by a private members' bill from the opposition, mm. but it is on record that this bill got support from all parties. It was a not only bipartisan support, bipartisan, mm. by party that both parties, by, by but it was multi. All the parties in parliament supported. Therefore, if our colleagues in opposition turned around and said they're leaving NRM, to me, then we push it back to the judges, the people, because the people should, should know that they are not principled and they are opportunistic and the people who vote them to parliament. Mm. The people should ask them and say, excuse me, isn't it you, the opposition, who moved the motion? Mm. That yes. Excuse me, isn't it true that this bill got support from all of you? Yes. How are you then saying now it is an NRM bill? Okay? Mm. So this is the genesis of the bill. Now, as far as our partners are concerned, I have recently be, been on a tour to Western Europe. I was in a company of the Minister of Foreign Affairs, General J.G. Odongo. Mm. I was with the Secretary General of NRM, Moses Biranga, and other senior part, uh, government officials. We, one of the things that we explain to our colleagues is that, personally, as a lawyer, I felt that the, the titling of that law is even wrong. The title says, anti-homosexual, Anti-homosexuality act. act. Mm. This thing had nothing to do with anti-homosexuality. The tri title of this law should have been family protection law. That is the title. Because if you examine a, a section by section, the object of this bill, or of this year when it was still a bill, was to protect children. For example, people were worried that uh, there would be a provision to compel you to report homosexual. Mm -hmm. The president and even parliament said, whose business is it? Who are you? Whose house are you going to be checking at night to see who is there? <laughs> so that reporting was abolished. But our friends abroad still keep peddling that there's a provision for compulsory reporting <coughs> and other things. So for us, when we went to German, mm. we explained to the German government that this is a family protection, especially mm. targeted and protecting children. We went to, to Denmark. Denmark, we met a committee of parliament, including a member of parliament who told us that for me, I'm homosexual. And he was quite strong in his opinion. But he said that the matters of is my private affairs, it has nothing to do with Uganda government and the Denmark. Yes, yes. So, uh, but again, when we explain that we are first of all misled by the titling of this bill, when it is actually supposed to be a family protection bill, it is called anti-homosexuality. It is not well thought out. So Denmark understood us. Same thing with UK. UK, we went to parliament. You know, UK has two parliaments, mm. the House of Commons and the House of Lords. We met the Lords. When we left, the issue came up against Uganda in the House of Lords. And this is the highest house. They met, one of the members we met stood up and defended Uganda successfully. So, on the issue of the, the anti-homosexuality law, we shall continue to engage our friends that we want to protect family. They shouldn't be misled by the titling of the law. And again, we shall also seek to engage with them. Uh, 
the convergence between the views of Ugandans as expressed in a multi-support of this bill mm. and, the, and their views. They will have to uh, tell us, if Ugandans say this, what do we do? Do we abolish what Ugandans say and we listen and to go you? With we'll listen to you. Mm. I think it's an, a, a, a continuous engagement that we shall have to continue. Next month, the same tour that I went to UK and on uh, German mm. and Denmark, we are going to Canada and we are going to, to US. We shall seek to explain and see. But also note that some people have tended to take it to the, to the courts of judicature. Mm. Because the constitution in Uganda provides that uh, the three arms of government are independent, but each check on it, each other. Mm -hmm. If you make a law and it is unlawful and constitutional, either by procedural aspect, because the constitution provides the procedure under which a law should be born. Mm. If a law is not born under that law, then it is unlawful. Or if it, it, it exceeds the provision under the constitution. Because subsidiary law should not be over and above the constitution. Mm. Therefore, the argumentation of this is still also being looked at in the judiciary. We wait to hear what the law, mm. how the law pronounces itself. Mm. But... Uh, I wouldn't mind what the law pronounces because those are our internal dynamics. Mm. If it is from the wisdom of the judges, that is our internal dynamics. But if it is from foreign, I, I tell you that next month we are going to USA, we are going to, to Canada, and we have a long list of people. We are going to meet the Congress people, we are going to meet the senators, we are going to meet everybody, World Bank and all that. And we shall keep on uh, discussing with them. We, our view is that this is a family protection law. It's really not a law as it, 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 the title shouts. And I, I pray that at one time that amendment should be made by editing just the title. We can the, amend the, the title. content will remain the same. Yes, content should remain the same. After all, no. the, uh, 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 the Congress people are always crying. You know, we made an amendment on the uh, Electoral Commission. Uh. I know the amendment that was made by adding the word independent. The, the, the National Election Commission, we, the main was to add the word independent, independent electoral commission. Election commission. And the, so, yes. so, so why wouldn't we amend this? Because I strongly believe that if we had put this law as the titling as Family Protection Act or Family Protection Bill and target for the protection of children as the law is, we wouldn't have had this resistance. But of course, you know, our parliament, they rushed through things, like I've seen recently, the law which was rushed for, uh, uh, the, which, was, which provided the cars for speakers. With all due respect, that law was rushed. It has gaps and gaps. Mm. So I, I still believe that this law could have been packaged better. But over and above, that we want our development partners, our friends abroad, to take us with that due respect to sovereignty and engage with us and the engagement continues. And, and I, I had uh, one, first of all, first question on even the titling as it is. I had the president speak during that speaker's conference that the, he, we, and I think in a sense, will not allow the influence of Western cultures on our own, sort of forcefully like uh, some of them seem to be doing. Do we, at what point do we then draw the line that even the title can remain as it is because that is a position that we hold and, and it shouldn't matter what you think about the law that we have. So that is one. The second is um, I, I wanted to understand from the fact that it has especially economic impact. The, the state minister uh, for finance Henry Msas <coughs> recently was on the floor of parliament saying it's creating a lot of economic uh, uh, uncertainties and risks and, and we might have to see how to renegotiate with the institutions like the World Bank that are largely fighting a lot of activities in the country. How do we still, or how do you think we are going to maintain, even if we change the title and the content, we remain with the content, how do we maintain that position but still be able to to, to work collaboratively with all of the international institutions, even including countries themselves? 
Yes, of <coughs> course, I, as I already said, that uh, you could choose to have a, a universal approach to it. For example, you could choose to, to if you wanted, to say, to, to, to amend the law or repeal the law. Mm. But you could also choose, we could choose to do, remember President Museven had already warned us in a movement caucus in, a, in the Kololo that you have to tighten your belt. Mm. What he had envisages was, what are the cost implications? How much money do we get? He was actually facing it head on. How much money do we get? Can from, we do away with it? Yeah, from, can't we do with it? He warned, he warned that if we're going to pass this law, and that was before passing, that we are passing this law, pass but be ready to tighten your belt. Mm. Okay? That's true. Yeah. So you could choose to repeal, repeal, but you could choose to tighten your belt and do it. But also, one thing I wanted to mention is that so many dynamics are still unfolding. Even in the America, uh, there are some congresses who are divided. Yeah, I've seen some of the Congress people actually they supporting They have even visited us here. Yes. So those are still the dynamics that will work out. Congress members are visiting us. They said, please maintain your ground. But also remember, America is going for election. And depending on which party will win, it also affects us. Because yes. the yeah. current party in power is more in favor for the homosexual <laughs> protection or promotion for that case. But the other party is not. So, so many mix are in the place that we would wait. But uh, if it directly affects us in terms of the funding. Which it is already a goal, we have it, been officially suspended from it. Yeah, and of course, in the minds of President Museveni, remember, President Museveni, first of all, gets all the economic details. He's an economist himself. And also gets all the, a consumer of all the intelligence information. So by now, he's aware about the the the... the the exact quantification or the financial cost implication to Uganda. So we shall wait and see as we engage there. Okay. Mm. I, I, I hope uh, something does come out of it. Uh, I think it's one thing to also, at the end of the day, there should be some semblance of state sovereignty, as much as some external forces does impact some of the operations. But also... And, and of course, you, you remember, we, uh, <coughs> in all global mixed, there are some partners... Mm who would want to deal with you without this conditionality? On this I see, yeah, there's many of them. So there are many Certainly. who would. So if we had a, a way of dealing with them, then that would be one other option. Mm. Mm. Okay, all right. That's true. So uh, to move on, and, and I also, as we have a few minutes to the end of this hour, I wanted you to also uh, make a comment about the upcoming. We have concluded the speakers' conference. We have the non-aligned movement uh, conference that is coming. We also have the G77 plus China that is also coming up. So in all of uh, these events as they're happening and Uganda as a country hosting, being able to host them, well, well, first of all, to begin with, for an ordinary Ugandan, what is in it for, for us as Ugandans, just hosting all of these parties? Uh, I mentioned it somewhere and somebody did and answer, they didn't get my explanation. Mm. Maybe I wasn't clear. I said the choice for the, for the hosting, for example, Nana Line, mm. is a plus on NRM because of the peace ushered in. And this guy was <laughs> at arms and with me. Now, for him, he was arguing mm. that this is a rotational <coughs> event, so it doesn't mean NRM. I said no. This is a working committee which checks your ability to host. Part of his There's argument, a checklist. I feel like part of his argument was true, though. There's a checklist that you have to meet. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you are uh, uh, holding Nana line, suppose Somali applied <laughs> with Uganda, who would host? Or Somalia and Tanzania? Who Very likely host? Tanzania would. So meaning, therefore, for Tanzania to qualify over and above Somali, there are checklists that Tanzania would have met. Mm. So in a similar way, there are checklists that Uganda met. Mm. And is, it all, is, it, is it not true, though, that uh, it's also a rotation, uh, it, it also happens on a rotational basis? Yes, it's true that some might... Me, 
You have to meet. Remember, <coughs> we, we have uh, 140 members. Yes. It is the second biggest organization after UN. Mm. UN has 193 mm -hmm. members. States, Uganda, Tanzania, and say Brazil, Argentina, what? There are 193 in UN. Now, in Nana Line, 140. So if it was for granted, don't you think that in our lifetime, out of the 140 rotational, after every three years, Uganda may stay without, forever without hosting. <laughs> That's true. Eh? Three, least in our 140 lifetime, times yes. three is what? It's about uh, 140 times three, zero, 12, two, three, 420. So we would have to wait for 420 years. <laughs> we would have to wait for 420 years to host it. So well, maybe is, is it true that if we can now meet the checklist and host instead of wait, uh, waiting the <coughs> rotation for 420 years? Logic shows that instead to wait rotationally for 420 years to come to Uganda, it wouldn't. <coughs> so you have to meet a checklist. So it's a plus that under Museveni is a plus that under NRM that Uganda can qualify to us this. Well, apart from that, is that the simplest thing is putting Uganda on an international body yeah. in, as far as tourism is concerned. Yes. By the way, we could even look at what is the definition of a tourist. Have you ever bothered to define a tourist? A tourist is somebody who comes and stays over, I think, for over 24 hours. Mm. There's a definition. If you came from Jinja and went to Luero, you want to get it? Yes, yes, me. Look. You check it. There should be a definition somewhere. And either under an act of parliament or under uh, tourism. If Google doesn't have then it should be. But I remember, a, a, a tourist is defined by a person moving from one location to another over a night, over a given period of time. Mm. That qualifies you to be a tourist. Therefore, it, right at the beginning, it exposes Uganda to foreigners. But also, the more you got, foreigners come here, the more it opens Uganda for for exposure to the world. Do you know how, how long it takes, uh, how much it costs to advertise a country on CNN for one minute? It, it's very expensive. Very expensive. Imagine, yes. Now, here you have 140 countries you are advertising for what? For two weeks. That's a serious uh, ad advertising for the country. Okay. Because to put Uganda on CNN for a minute is uh, millions of for, for good reasons, for that matter. Mm. Mm. So now you have a country being advertised by 100 and to 140 countries or to the entire world for two weeks. This is absolutely good. And it generates income. It has also impacted on the infrastructure. You know, even in, the, in our traditional communities, there's a saying in my culture that uh, means a visitor brings satisfaction. Because if a visitor comes, even that chicken you had not wanted to slaughter, you, <laughs> you will slaughter. slaughter. <laughs> or that goat you didn't want to slaughter, you will slaughter. Now in this case, the pace at which you would have taken up for working on the roads, mm. we now had to double because the visitors are there. Are coming, so yes. those are some of the effects that we get. Where we could what, not what? have squeezed supplementary budget to hurry this, now we did it. And when the visitors go, the roads are there. Also, on an addition, on another note, mm. Does it also not expose, and especially I'm asking this intentionally because you are part of the ruling uh, government, uh, does it also not expose our level of commitment to the national development agenda as a country? Because if we must have to do things hurriedly because we are expecting visitors, for example, you have a home, and, and or if it rains, water uh, goes inside and all of that, and the only time you get to roof is when you expect visitors. Doesn't that tell something about you as a homeowner, as a, an inhabitant of that area? What do you think? On a right or not, yes, as a country, we're going to benefit the majority of us because the roads are going to be made chop chop. I hope they survive for like the next 10 years anyway. But, but what does it speak to our commitment to the national agenda and our development? Of course, it, it challenges us that if we can do this when visitors are there, why don't we do it? Ordinarily on, on another time. But this yes. is part of human nature. 
I can assure you, even in a classroom, if you knew the headmaster is coming to this class, would you sweep better? I, would. I already <laughs> gave the example of a home. You have a visitor. If you, you, you have seen homes where there's going to be kohinjira, yes. okay? Mm. A girl is going to, be, to do kohinjira at home. Many homes have got first leave. So it is part of the, because we live in a competitive world of priorities, mm. even as a family, you have the priority to do this, priority to do this. So in normal routine life, those priorities draws your attention. But now when you're first at the task of giving away your daughter, mm. you now concentrate your priorities to that. So it is but, in human nature, but, but, both but, at family level, at a societal level, at a national level. But I find also, uh, that, that is true. I, the, I do agree. It's about priorities. Yes, yes, I do agree. And mm. I want to also question that priorities. Mm. Because if you look at normally an, a country that is progressive in nature, there are some sectors that should be priority in that case. Security, certainly, because a lot of things hinge on the security of our country, which you have relatively done well. Uh, the other, education, health, I think health would be second, then education, then of course infrastructure because it informs the economy. If you're taking children to school, you need to be able to have a route and all of these things. So then we are going to have a question on what is priority and what is not and what informs the of priority. Because I feel like that should be an essential service for every Ugandan. Must we always have to wait for these uh, times such as these for guests? For you say why priority comes up is because at any one time, mm. you don't have enough resource envelope. Even at family, for example, at family, mm. you're thinking of school fees. Yes. You're thinking of building a, maybe a shop somewhere. Mm. You're thinking of buying a car. You're thinking of clothes. You're thinking of food. Those are priorities in a family. Mm -hmm. And here comes, bam, Betty has to go ko injira. And he has to come to the home. So you now have to readjust everything. So the priorities are there. And let me tell you, no country can do a major event, <coughs> including Switzerland or Norway, without extra putting things for Norway. that particular. Yes, that's true. In 1994, when World Cup was hosted football in the USA, they nearly had to do USA afresh. Here recently in Qatar, you saw how much I Qatar saw, yes, built all Qatar is a rich country and what, you think everything is there. When the World Cup came, you saw what Qatar did. Labor was, you know, they almost brought the whole world to do labor there. Mm. So it's not only in Uganda that a major event comes and you do many activities. It is all over. And as I said, it is a matter of priority because during routine life, you are preoccupied with other priorities. And when this comes as a challenge, you really feel you have to, and especially when you have guests from outside. It's normal course of life. Mm -hmm. No country can do without. OK, all right. I, Even I, Switzerland I, I, will have to do something about the airport, <laughs> the Geneva airport. <laughs> they will have to, uh, to, to increase the, uh, what do they say, gates. Get one, two. If there were terminals, terminals if there were <coughs> 20 terminals, you will see them increasing to 30 terminals. Yes. And, 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 and I hope we can also do something at, to our... Yes. To our, so it's not that only you, in Uganda that, that an event is coming this. up and you do it. Now that you mentioned it, I hope some um, workers can be done on our, on our airport. You yes. come from the other side, it doesn't look very enticing. Yes. <laughs> You're coming home and don't feel very welcome at all. But yes. anyways, I thank you so much for those insights. We're going to... Uh, uh, the, even uh, uh, to move forward before we break, we have just like two or three minutes to, to the top of the hour. For after this duration, okay, we've had the tourism, we had all of these things. It, is it is there a thing Uganda does it elevate some level of its power in these partnerships because of hosting these kind of events, or is it does it remain a, not, a normal member as it has been? even after hosting these events. What, how does that work? No, it gives Uganda a lot of power. For example, in decision swing, mm. like in UN, Uganda will have to take positions on behalf of NAM. NAM, yes. So oh, we, for the year that it Yeah, is. for the year that we're in the chair. Mm. So it will take a swing. Mm. Uh, we take a lot of... You will find here... Be, either coming to the chairman, the president, 
will be a constant visit. Mm. So for, for you to succeed in the policy decision, mm. uh, like voting in UN and others, you need non-aligned because they tend to act as a block. Ah. So it makes Uganda a lot of power in decision making. Yeah. Because yes, they yeah. take it's many decisions on behalf of, of the whole body. Of the whole body. Because you are the chair. You know the role of a chair. Mm. Yeah. So it gives Uganda additional weight mm. in the international community mm. for the duration that it is in chair. Of course, it, is, it gives Uganda also the visibility for the duration that it is in the chair. Okay. Mm. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go in for a very, very short break. Uh, of course, when we come back, we're still talking about matters of national importance, as a lot of people like to call it. And, and the next time, we're going to talk about a number of things, including some of them, if I should give you a sneak peek. Uh, one of them is Uganda and Kenya's fallout about the uh, 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 stuff like that. And of course, Uganda having to, uh, to go to the East African Court of Justice, which is, I think, the first time in history of these two countries, and whether we should expect any sort of uh, redress from that area, but also question on uh, the diplomacy. Has it failed this time? But of course, we have the case here requisition for 600 million to hold a COVID parade. <coughs> I, I, I can't wait to hear uh, what uh, our guest has to say about that one because uh, he, as we were talking about, also he was talking about things to do with priorities. So maybe that we could uh, look into it. And a lot of other things I may not have to break down now. But uh, be, uh, make sure you come back in the second hour or uh, be able to address some of those issues. The Alternative Dig Talk. Real Issues. Real Talk. Egypt. What's up? Tell man, what's up? Man, can you imagine people just dump everywhere? Someone drinks water and throws the bottle wherever. Come on, Rogers. What else do you expect people to do with an empty bottle? Do you know that plastics take at least 450 years to decompose? What? That's a long time. Exactly. Because plastics are made out of a lightweight and flexible material that doesn't decompose easily. And plastics everywhere in the environment cause plastic pollution. What is plastic pollution now? It is the accumulation of plastic waste in the environment, like bottles, polythene bags, straws, all of these contribute to plastic pollution. I have been using them without knowing their effect. Yeah, a lot of people have. Plastics are a danger to the ecosystem, both on land and in water. So how can we overcome this problem? Is there something we can do? Oh yes, we can reduce by minimizing the use of plastics, reuse by repurposing them, or recycle by collecting and processing them into new products. Everyone wants to change the world, but no one wants to change themselves for the world. How about we change our habits for the world? And, and it, it starts, starts with, with me and, and you. This message is brought to you by Alternative Digitalk. Hi Rogers, can I ask you something? Uh, shoot. What does corruption mean? Well, summarily, corruption is abuse of public power for personal gain or for the benefit of a group to which one owes allegiance. For example, when a public office is abused by an official accepting or soliciting a bribe. By the way, private people can be corrupt too, like bribing police officers to escape fines. Mm, okay, so exactly how does that concern me? <laughs> well, do you pay taxes? I guess, yeah. What does that have to do with this? Everything. Because those taxes you pay are supposed to facilitate services you use, like water, electricity, roads construction, medicines in hospitals, name it. Hmm. Okay, that is much bigger than I thought. But it can be stopped, right? Well, yes it can. Although it may not be as easy as it sounds. And here is the reason why. Corruption roots are grounded in our country's social, political, economic, bureaucratic traditions and policies. So, what has kept it going this long? I mean, why don't we stop it? Well, the main reason why it has been here for so long is because institutions are weak. Either as a result of poorly defined ethical standards of public service, weak administrative and financial systems, or ineffective watchdog agencies. Hmm. What can we do to stop it? Um, at a national level, we must focus on strengthening the independence and effectiveness of public institutions that fight corruption. At a personal level, we must commit to never giving a bribe. 
I promise I'll never give a bribe. Well, that's a great decision you have made. Me and you now have to spread this message to all our friends. If we all do our part, corruption will be no more. This message is brought to you by Alternative Digitalk. The Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk. Welcome back from that short uh, commercial break, ladies and gentlemen. My name again is Roger Sturiawe, and with me is uh, Major Retired uh, Witch Paula, who is the Director for External Affairs of the NRM Party, but is also a retired, uh, I think, judge at the International uh, Criminal Court and, and uh, an expert in issues of, of children and children's rights and the Kadogos, young, young militants and whatnot. So he's, he's, he has an extensive skill, but also has been a part of a lot of uh, the national processes. So we have him today to look at 2024 as a whole, what is it that we need to look at, but also to interrogate some of those issues that have been outstanding, some that has been transferred from 2023 to 2024, but also those that are likely to come up. We've been talking about NAM, which is going to happen this year, and he did highlight a number of issues that are going to, the benefits that as a country are going to be getting. I think one that stood out for me is the fact that Uganda now, uh, especially at the negotiating on behalf of the bloc, it obviously puts the country out there. But also to move away, uh, one of the things I thought we'd begin with, uh, speaking of uh, diplomacy, is Uganda and Kenya's relationship um, with this whole fuel thing and the country feeling cheated and going to this African Court of Justice, uh, saying that to have this issue addressed. Uh, first of all, before we get to the relationship itself, do you as a lawyer, or someone from the legal fraternity, do you have confidence that the East African Court of Justice is going to have to pronounce itself and its position and resolution is going to be respected by, by any of these countries? Yeah, I have confidence that it will because we have not come across any negative uh, acts or, or tendencies of mm. the court. Mm. Uh, the court has been quiet, the court has been there. Mm. And you know, there, there is a common saying is in that uh, no news is good news. Mm -hmm. So if you don't hear about an organization like that court, it means things are going on well. Mm. If there was Manyanga, by now it would be on the news all over. So the, the fact that it has been quiet and doing it things means it is good because no news is good news. Bad news travel faster than good news. Now, about this matter, I just like to say that, of course, Uganda is uh, divided by boundaries mm -hmm. to make Kenya Uganda, but we are basically one. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have come on, especially they colonized by the British and all that. And for me, whenever I've gone around the world, when I meet a Kenyan, I feel like I've met a Uganda. Yeah. Same thing like Tanzanian. I lived in the, or oh, now Rwanda also. Uh, I lived in Switzerland, as you were saying. Uh, I was a judge at the U UN Human Rights for eight years. All my company were, you would think I'm Kenyan or I'm Tanzanian. So we are one and the same. Now, we have had, of course, like brothers or sisters, a bit of misunderstanding in the past. Like during my, there would all be this kind of misunderstanding, but it was always resolved. Even during Kenyatta, uh, Kenya would block the poultry products from Uganda and it would always be resolved. Now, this current one uh, has gone to the court. It is unique in its sense. I think it's the first time. It is the first time. My reading would have been that going to court was actually a consent between the two presidents. You see, when a law is in place like the Charter, or the many laws that govern the East African, the instruments that bind us, when you pass a law in place, you don't, a law cannot be interpreted or argumented unless you put it to a judicial body. Mm. So sometimes it is good to throw a law 
to the judicial body mm -hmm. for argumentation, synthesis, and uh, dissecting it so that you see in practice. Because when you pass a law, you don't know the gaps and the lacuna, mm -hmm. and you don't know its interpretation. Sometimes the lawmakers don't actually seem to see the gravity. Therefore, I think this is a test to interpret this provision mm -hmm. because countries seem to be interpreting it differently. So now we get the chance, a forum, an independent forum mm -hmm. with competent judges and I believe with competent advocates who will appear before that, who will now argue out this case so that it is interpreted once for all. Mm -hmm. In that, if, for example, in Kenya, there's a lobby group or a business community who wanted to swing it in their interest. Sometimes the president himself doesn't want to come head on with them. He says, okay, since your lobby group is saying this, take it to court. Mm. Let the court pronounce itself. So I was actually thinking about it like uh, a way by our leaders saying to deal away with the DC this strong lobby group to deal away with this, what is the right word, the clique of, what is it called it, of DC capital owners or whatever, those who have their views this way. Mm -hmm. Instead of blaming me as, a, say, President Rutu or President Museven, put it to court for interpretation. So that once the court has argumented this, it has helped us to interpret this, then that becomes a position. Yes. Otherwise, the Attorney General of respective countries would interpret it in its own no, way. No, yeah. Especially when you have the oligarchy from whatever angle. Because this is a, 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 a matter rising out of petroleum. I think that is the brief facts. Yeah, largely. largely. The brief facts is the matter is arising out of a petroleum deal where Uganda National Oil Company wanted to get a way of transacting. Yes with the Kenya and the Kenyan people are interpreting it another way. You find there is some oligarchy or some